Greetings, my statistics friends. This uh, video is for chapter number seven, and I'm going to work out a couple of the home work problems. And once again, I'm going to utilize the TI-84 uh, for many of the calculations. So this is chapter number seven, and let's take a look at question number three. So for question number three, it says that overproduction of uric acid in the body can be an identification of cell breakdown. This may be an advanced indication as illnesses like gout, leukemia, or lymphoma. Over a period of months, an adult male patient has taken six blood tests uh, for this acid, and the mean concentration was X bar, 5.35 milligrams per uh, DL, and the distribution of ur uric acid in healthy adult males can assume to be normal, with a population uh, standard deviation of 1.77 milligrams per DL. So our N in this case is six because there were six samples taken. And from those six samples, the average of those six samples was 5.35 milligrams per DL. Then we're told that your, uh, this type of acid in uh, healthy adult males is normally distributed. And somehow we know that in the entire population of all adult males, uh, the standard deviation uh, for uh, those males is uh, 1.7 milligrams per DL. So I want to point out one thing that's very important to understand here. When we are talking about finding confidence intervals, there are two different confidence intervals that we worry about. We either think about it with a normal distribution, so that's the Z distribution in our calculators, or we think about it with the T distribution, the student's T, sometimes called the Gossett distribution. And the big key, the big key to figure out which of the two we should use is when it says assume that it is normal assume it's normal, then we use the Z distribution. When it says assume to be normal, we use the Z distribution. And the other thing that's going to happen is then we will be told then what the standard deviation of that entire population is. Uh, in practice, it's actually quite rare that we ever have this information. But since we're learning, uh, we have sometimes these uh, made up examples or rare examples where we do know what the standard deviation is. Okay, so I know to use the Z distribution, the normal d test and the normal distribution, because I'm told it's normal, and I'm given this standard deviation for the entire population, in this case, of adult males. So it's asking us to find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean for this acid in a patient's blood. And then what is the margin of error? Round your... Um, answers to two decimal places. So we're asking us to find the lower limit and the upper limit and then the margin of error. Okay, so I'm gonna use my calculator. So from my home screen, what I do is hit the stats button and then I wanna go over to uh, test. And I want to go down to number seven and it's the Z interval. So remember, I'm going to use the Z interval because I have a normal distribution and I've been given the standard deviation for the entire population. So I collect that one. And I have two options here. I have data or I have stats. So if we were given the results, the data, for each of those six blood tests, we would put the data in list one and choose data and calculate from there. Uh, so we would put the known value for our standard deviation for the entire population and then say, hey, it's in list one, and then we want a 95% confidence interval and go to calculate. But we weren't given that in this particular problem. What we were given was the results, right, the actual results from all five of those situations. So here I'm going to put the uh, 1.77 because that's the standard deviation for the entire population of adult males. Somehow the researchers know that. And then the X bar for my 
particular six samples that I took was 5.35. And then the number of samples that we collected was six for 95% confidence interval. So I put that there and then I hit calculate. So I'm told that the upper and lower is here. So the lower is 3.933 and the upper is 6.7663. And so I go back to my problem, and it says to round my answer to two decimal places. So my lower limit will be 3.93, two decimal places, and my upper limit will be 6.766, so 6.77 rounding to two decimal places. And then I'm asked to find the margin of error. So there are two ways to find the margin of error. The first way is to take one of these two numbers and subtract x bar. It doesn't matter which one we choose. I like always doing the upper, but you could choose the lower. So if I do 6.766 and I minus away x bar, which was 5.33, uh, 5.35, not 33, 35, I get 1.41. 1.416 and so I'm supposed to do two decimal places so 1.42 would be my margin of error that's one way and then some people compute the margin of error by taking the upper which was 6.7663 and subtract the lower which is 3.933 and you get that number and divide it by 2. Either one will give you the same result. So those are my three answers for A. For part B, uh, what do I need? Well, what conditions are necessary? Well, I have to have a normal distribution to use this method. And I know it's normal because it tells me in the problem to assume it's normal. Um, sigma is unknown. So for me, that's not the case, right? Sigma is known, so that's not one. A uniform distribution, no, I need to have a normal distribution, not the uniform. Uh, sigma is known, somehow we know sigma here, we're told what sigma is about the adult healthy males. And then n is large, well because n doesn't have to be large because I'm told that the distribution is normal. So just these two things, the normal distribution and uh, my sigma is known. Part C. Interpret the results. Well, the results are we are 95% confident that the true uric acid level for this patient falls within the interval of the lower to the upper. So we're 95% confident that the, the true um, results for this particular patient lie somewhere between 3.93 and 6.77. That's what we're 95% confident in. Another way of saying that is, if I conducted randomly a total of 100 times the same test, I would expect that 95% of the time my results would lie between 3.93 and 6.77. So that's what uh, this last part says. And then part D, find the sample size necessary if we were restricted to having an error of 1.14. Okay, so I'm going to look at an equation here. Remember that my error for the normal distribution uh, in the confidence interval is the zc, z sub c, multiplied by sigma divided by square root of n. So my z sub c for 95% confidence area, uh, interval is 1.96 standard deviations. So 95% of the area to the left of the tail of the curve is 1.96 standard deviations. And so what I have to do then is plug in all the values and solve for n. So the error they asked us was 1.14. The z sub c is 1.96. The standard deviation is 1.77. And then n, we don't know. So I have to solve that. So uh, I take the square root of n and multiply it over here on the left. And I take this 1.14 and I divide it to the right. And I get the square root of n is equal to this, uh, this number. So I multiplied this number out and I rounded it off. So I got 3.043. And then I have to square both sides to solve for n. So I squared both sides and I got 9.26.
So I need to take 9.26 samples in order to be uh, have an error of 1.14. So let's see here. How do I put that in my calculator? It asks me to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to put 9. And I'm going to cross my fingers that I got them all right. I'm going to hit submit. And it looks like all of those are correct except for the last number. So this says this is wrong, right? This is only 9. So what I'm going to do is put in 10 and see if that's the correct answer. So this time I put in 10 because I read the directions correctly, right? It says round your answer up to the nearest whole number. So I rounded it from 9.26 up to 10.